Amen. God is good all the time. How many feel his presence here this morning? He is here. Yes. Ben put his hand up back there. Amen. Well, this morning I'm going to teach. If you remember that last Sunday I taught on how the word of God will change us. Amen. And I taught a little bit about meditation. Then on Wednesday, I taught on the word being the sure foundation, and I taught on, on meditation, actually a lot on meditation. Yes. Well, as I was before the Lord, he says to continue to teach on meditation. Yes. And that's what I'm gonna do, because it's not taught a lot out there. Right. I had never heard it taught in any church Amen. before I began to study it for myself. And I know it is, I've heard people speak about it. Uh, there was, there's different, different places where I have been and I've heard it, but it's a treasure. And when I was putting this message together last night and late into the night, he said to call it the treasure of meditation. So even though we might review a few things, but it's like, it's so powerful that we want to grab a hold of it, church. We want to take it for ourselves. We want to be changed, amen? amen? And so I'm going to be teaching on meditation, amen. Amen. amen? And as a review, if you remember last Sunday and Wednesday, we talked about the meaning of the word meditation is to ponder deeply about something. Also, in the word of God, you will find the Hebrew word where it says meditation. If you study that Hebrew word, it, it many times, if not most of the time, means talking to oneself. Well, in the natural world, if we're talking to ourselves, they think we're crazy. But I want you to know that with God, that is not so. Because the word of God says that as we hear the word, over and over with our own ears, it begins to change us, amen? amen? That's why I like, there was a time in my life, I should say, and I like I like this, where I would go to sleep with the word of God in my ear playing, amen? Because I knew that my spirit was grabbing a hold of it, amen. even though I was sleeping, my subconscious. Are, are you with me today? Hallelujah. So with, what it means by talking to oneself is like taking that word, whether whatever scripture it is. I, I read about somebody that was a very powerful minister who God spoke to him to take Psalm 91 and meditate on that and nothing else for six months. Someone say, wow. wow. I remember when I was in the Philippines. And it was right after 9-11, it was 10 days later that I left and people said, don't go because they were expecting another attack. Mm -hmm. And the day that I was leaving, it was like they had picked this up on surveillance or whatever. But I went before the Lord and even though I did not find people that agreed with me, the Lord said, I want you to go and I went. And I'm leading to something. As I got there, and my children will remember this, but when I got over there, it turned out it was very dangerous. In the Philippines, there were terrorists, and there was a price for me, my head. They said there was a price on my head. That's what they told me. And I remember the Lord saying, I want you to go up to the prayer tower, <coughs> and I'm going to, and I want you to start meditating on Psalm 91. I'm not telling you to meditate on Psalm 91, but I, what I'm trying to say is that whatever God puts in your heart, if you're willing to take that, meditate on it a week, a two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months, however long, until there's a release. Amen. Until you know that you know you will never, ever be shaken. There are truths in not Psalm 91, I'll never be shaken. I wrote a course on it. Because as I got up there, God began to reveal. And he said, Deborah, I'm going to open you up. As you begin to meditate on this, and I'm going to show you depths in this song. I'm going to take off layers and begin to show you because this is what my people need to walk in in the days ahead when danger is all around us. When we get the negative reports, and that was not my message, but anyway, I get to preaching when I get onto that because it has transformed, changed me, caused me to walk in a way that is uh, fearless. 
I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means, but I can go in the nations and they can tell me that there is machine guns just right down the road and I will drive right through it if God tells me to because I have revelation of what he has put within me through his word. Come on, someone. And we need that for our personal lives. We need that for our health. We need that for our finances. We need that to grow spiritually with him. And that is why I'm teaching on meditation again. Because I don't want to just teach it as your pastor. And you only hear it once and you sort of forget about it down the road. If you were not here last Sunday, I recommend you get the CD. If you were not here Wednesday night, I recommend you get the CD. Because I feel that this is one of the most important things. Because, you know, I said, Lord, really, you want me to teach again? I've never taught on meditation two times in a row. What am I going to say? <laughs> well, he showed me some scriptures. Yeah. And I began to study. And I'm excited because it's doing something in me. And I'm determined to get in the word like I've never. I've been in the word. I love the word. I meditate on the word. But come on, this is a new season. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So we're talking about pondering deeply or talking when it, it talks about talking to ourself. Um, you know, that you take part of that verse and you just, you just speak it. You just think about it. Maybe it's just one word there that God is highlighting. Then you go to the next word. Are you with me? Yeah. But you're speaking it. You're, you're, you're speaking it maybe softly. I'm not saying shouting. You can, depending who's around you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. But I believe that it's probably one of the most neglected spiritual tools yes. that so much of the body has neglected. And that is why people get so frustrated. They're like, well, God's left me. I'm never changed. This is never, I'm never going to change. But look, I'm still, still at this place. Maybe it's because You've never understood the tool of meditation. Because I can stand before you and guarantee you it will change your life. Like I said last week, memorizing did not change me in the inside. But meditation, as I kept on, there, there would be scriptures. I'll write them down. God is speaking to me about a certain script. It might be a different scripture than you. He's speaking to me about a scripture right now and every time I sit down with the Lord my Bible just opens up there I said how do you do that Lord I'm not saying that your Bible's just going to open up there but it's just I guess I've been there so much and I'm like God and what happens in that I begin to intercede I begin to cry out for the the riches of that word to be deposited in me amen is anybody hearing me today Glory to God. So whatever it is, it's different for all of us. Don't compare what God is doing in you to somebody else. Just let him do what he wants. You've got to start somewhere, church. Amen. And this is where to start. Yes, we need Holy Spirit. You, you all know how much I love Holy Spirit. You know how much I love the presence of God. Yes, we need that balance. But without the roots, we're going to topple over. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Meditation will cause you to go down deep. Amen. And you will prosper no matter where you are. Even if you're in famine, even if, if everything's dead around you, you can be in a church that's so dead, there's no glory in it, there's no presence, and you can prosper. Amen. Now that's not this church. But I'm just saying, wherever you find yourself, yeah. don't complain about your surroundings. Because you can prosper wherever you are. If your roots go down deep, because there's water down in that deep place. There's the presence of God down in that deep place. Come on. There's Amen. the glory of God, and he is very strong here today. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to attempt to finish this, and if I don't, we'll finish it next week. But God has promised us. He's promised to give us treasures so great beyond anything the world can offer you. Do you believe that today? And I believe that one of the greatest treasures 
that God wants to open up for the body of Christ is meditation. Amen. And as you study the word, you will be amazed at how often that word meditation or a word that means that is in the scripture. I'm amazed. As I went and studied yesterday and last night, I'm like, wow, I've never preached on that, God. And hopefully I'll get to some of that today. But throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, and even Jesus spoke it out of his very own mouth, amen, we find men and women that knew how to get the riches of the word in them. And it changed them. And we look at them and we go, wow, I want to meet David one day. Wow, I want to meet Jeremiah one day. Amen. Are you with me? I want to meet Joshua. Hallelujah, and so on. So we're going to start with a scripture that I love very much. We, we studied Joshua 1.8 last week, so you need to get the CD if you want that. But I'm going to go to Psalm 1, 1 and 2. We're going to look at a lot of scripture today because that's teaching. I'm going to show you in many places, amen? And I'm going to give you a lot of scripture so that you're able to take and study it. You're able to take and meditate on something that really touched your life. Psalm 1. And this, we know that David understood the power of meditation. I talked about that last week or Wednesday. All of it blows together, I think. But everybody at Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sits in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. So it tells you, before we get into the good part, the things that should not be happening in your life. Amen? It says that if this is not taking place, you're going to be a blessed man or woman. And I don't know if anybody that would not want to be blessed, especially when it's God's blessings and God's treasures and God's riches and God's inheritance. Amen? So it says that we do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen? We walk in the counsel of the godly. Amen? If we need some counsel, we need to be careful who we're listening to, who we're spending time with. In verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He loves the word. Why do you think he loves the word? Because what it does. Amen. How it changes him, the strength that it gives him, the courage, the boldness that he's able to walk in, the tra change, the transformation. Amen. Why does he like the word? It's alive, church. Amen. Yes. There's power in it. Amen. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates day and night. There we see the word. He meditates. It doesn't mean that's all you're doing all the time, but your priorities. Amen. You're thinking on him. You're thinking on Instead of thinking on negative things, you put your mind into thinking on what the word of God says, what the promise of God, because as you think on it, it drops in your spirit and it begins to change you. And it begins to change your situation. Isn't that good? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Some of us need situations changed. Amen. That's good. And in his law, he meditates day to night. Day and night. And I want to say, I believe that this is a key to growing spiritually. So we don't stay babies or stay, you know, as toddlers or, or beyond, if you could say it that way in the spirit realm, that we begin to grow. Hallelujah. I believe it's a key. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that shall bring its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall also not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Amen. There might be areas in your life where saying, this is not prospering. We're not talking finances. We're talking, it can be finances. But it's talking wholeness. It's talking mind, soul, and spirit. Amen? And emotions and what your will, so forth. 
This secret to spiritual growth is so simple, but it's so powerful that even a child could do it. Every one of you here, you could meditate. Amen. The young people that are in the room and beyond. This is awesome. It'll determine the path you walk on the rest of your life. Because once something gets in your spirit, it's there, church. It's there. It becomes a part of who you are. You don't have to lean on somebody else to get you through that situation or whatever. Come on. You're able to begin to walk it because of the richness of the word that is part of you that is changing your very being. It's so powerful. It is so powerful, church, that Satan hates it. So he's made counterfeits. And many Christians can be afraid of the word meditation. Well, God had it first. Come on. Right. Same as the word dance. God had it first. Right. Yes. I'll dance before the Lord. Amen. Come on. Yes. And it's same with meditation. And we're not talking new age. No. Yeah, there's meditation of finding the God in you. No. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> False prophets, so forth. Come on. Meditating on nothing emptying my mind. No, you want to meditate on something. Because Satan will come in and take over. You empty your mind and just like, whoa, whoa. That's not what we're talking about, okay? He hates it. So everything that is powerful and that is good. How many know that Satan will bring a counterfeit and cause people to be afraid and to run from it? Yeah. And yet, it's one of the most powerful things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just like music. He has his music. But God had music first. Amen. Praise. Yeah. Yeah. Praise music. Well, as you listen to it, it'll change you. Yeah. It'll change where you are. It'll change your perception. It'll, it'll just change. It's amazing. You can come in so down and depressed. You put that praise. Yeah. Amen. Well, and that's the same thing. With, with the enemy. We got to be careful what we fill ourselves with. Because that's exactly the fruit we're going to have. This word says here that as we meditate on the word of God, as we love it and treasure it, we're going to bear fruit. And it's going to be good fruit, church. It's time we start bearing good fruit. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Not this other stuff. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said last week that a warrior is an excellent meditator. Whatever you're meditating on is going to affect who you are and what begins to happen and what you bring forth in your life. So everybody really does know how to meditate. Amen. I was an excellent warrior meditator. I worried about everything. I talked about that. I don't know when it was Sunday. Maybe it was the 2 p.m. service or Wednesday. I don't know. I've been in a lot of services since. But I used to worry. I would That would go over my mind, and it would just take control, just take over in those early days. Amen. And I've learned to stop it. Because not that Satan isn't going to come in and bring that thought, but we can stop it with the word. We can intercept. So it has no effect and brings no negative fruit to us. Amen? Amen. And guess what? It's simple, but it's, it is work. It means we have to do something. Amen. Right. So powerful. Hallelujah. Planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. Do you remember that Holy Spirit has been saying this is a new season of fruitfulness? I had no idea we'd go this way, but it does make sense to me. Amen? He says that you're not going to wither. You're not going to fold up and die. He said you're going to prosper. He said that what you set your hands to, you're going to prosper. We need to declare that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The areas that we struggle in, we just start speaking it to it. Speak to it. And say you're going to prosper. You're going to go beyond in this area. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. I want to talk about Prophet Jeremiah. He knew about the power of meditation. And we're going to go to 
to Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah 15. We're going to go to verse 16. Verse 16. Your words were found, and I ate them. Now, he didn't take the, the Bible and start eating it. Okay? But it's talking about meditation. Amen. Do, I re do you remember the example of the cow I gave last yes, week? Yes. I think that's just the most perfect example of what meditation really is. Taking the hay, starting to chew it, and then chew it, and chew it. And that's what we do. We take the word and we start chewing it. In other words, not naturally, but spiritually. We start chewing it. We start thinking about it. We start taking it apart. We, we, it comes out of our mouth and chew it and chew it and chew it. And then the, what does the cow do? He swallows it. But there's more to get out of that. And see, that's what I believe God is saying. There are layers of my word that I want to reveal to my people in this season. So what does the cow do? He spits it back up because there's more to get out of it. There are more nutrients to get out of it. There are more, whatever you want to say, vitamins. There's more to get out of it. So he spits it up, chews it, and chews it, and chews it, and swallows it. And I don't know how many times he does it, but he does it until there's nothing left to get out of it. And that's the way we need to be with the word. Amen? But Jeremiah said, I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Listen, as we eat his word daily, it's manna. When Israel was in the um, wilderness, right? That was in the Old Testament. When they were in the wilderness, God provided food for them daily from heaven. It would just appear, and they'd eat it, and then it'd be gone. Daily, they received their manna. Daily, God wants us to eat the word. Hallelujah. When we eat the scriptures daily, we have a reservoir. It goes from here, it goes down here. We have a reservoir of godly wisdom. Amen. Stored up in our hearts, so when a problem comes, we don't have to just go crazy. This will come up. Amen? Because it's already there. It's already there. And we can draw from what is within us and what has become a part of us. Amen. He says in verse 17. Well, let's go back. Uh, and your word was to me the joy. I'm in 16. And rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the assembly of the mockers, nor did I rejoice with them. I sat alone because of your hand that was upon, up, upon me. And as I was people and just put his hand on their head and then just zap them with an anointing, and they rise up just like that, and they start opening their mouth, and there's such powerful, powerful words that come out. It's a process. Amen? It's a process, and there isn't anybody that God won't use if we're willing to go through that possible. We can self-appoint ourselves, and it's going to get us in trouble down the road. It'll crush. Even if the calling is on our life, we need to go through the process and allow Holy Spirit, amen? Allow Holy Spirit to release it in its time as you pass the test and you've done what it is that is needed to equip you to stand in that place. Are we understanding the word here today? Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, I wasn't doing what everybody else was doing. I needed to meditate. I needed to eat the word. So there is a 
He said, I sat alone. Now that could mean a number of different things, but I'm taking it and saying sometimes God wants us alone in his presence. If not, not just sometimes, he wants us there every day. Amen? The carve out that time. If your day is busy, even if you take it a little bit of time, it will make a difference. You've got to have your manna for the day. You've got to eat. Amen. Every day. Have your manna. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and he was, he was one that he said, I believe it's Jeremiah 29. We're going to go there. But he said, my heart is so set on you, God. I am choosing this for my life. Because for one thing, he understood the call. That he was that he was called to. Let's go to Jeremiah 29, 13. Jeremiah 29, 13. Oh, we love this. 11, I love it. It says God has plans for every one of you. He says, I think good thoughts about you. That's what I say. No matter what anybody else says, I believe that word. That's right. I believe that word. He says, I have thoughts of peace, not of evil. That's not what I'm, where I'm going to, but I've seen it because it was underlined. He said, I have a future for you. I have a hope for you. Even when you don't believe, I still have a future if you'll allow me to bring it to pass in your life and yield unto me. Amen? But look at verse, is it 13 I want to go to? I believe so, everybody, yes. Let's go to 13. He says, and you will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. I will be found by you. Amen. And, and God says, when you go after me, when you seek me, you will find me. And I believe that part of that seeking and going after God is meditation. Getting the word, not reading. I used to tell my children, you don't have to read a whole chapter today. Just take one verse. Amen? Just take one verse, that same verse tomorrow. It's not about the quantity. It's the quality. It's what we do with it so we can bring change. Amen. And of course, there's nothing wrong with reading a chapter. I'm hoping you hear what I'm saying through all of this. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says to seek, and you will find me when you do it with all of your heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Seeking God through his word takes effort. Amen. It requires that we get away. We have to get away from the world's distractions get away from the world's influences. It requires that we get alone. Amen? And it requires that we become quiet. Hallelujah. And that's hard. With as busy as life is, right? You probably would agree. Amen. Or most of you. It is hard. It's like our day is filled. But we have to make that time. We have to say, I'm choosing this. As we sang this morning, that I make a choice to lift him higher in my life. I make a choice to honor him. I make a choice. I make, nobody can make that choice for you. I can hit you over a head with a hammer and say, do it, do it. That'll mean you're going to do it. And plus, I would never do that. But you understand what I'm saying? Nobody can make you. You have to want to. You have to want that change. You have to so want God in your life in that way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So I was blessed by that when I found that. We see examples in the New Testament, but I just want to talk about Jesus. When he was fasting for 40 days in the wilderness. How many remember that? And he was getting weaker and weaker physically, I would say, right? If anybody's done a 40-day fast, you will know that's going to happen. And what sustains you is his presence. And so he's getting weaker and weaker, and who comes along? Satan comes along, and he tempts him. 
Because he says, now, if you are really God, then take those stones that are all around you. You won't understand that unless you go to Israel. Right, Gary? Right. I heard your testimony one time. There are so many stones all around Israel. Amen? Yeah. And he says, well, then take these stones that are all around you and make it into something to eat. Make it into bread, right? And what does Jesus answer? We're going to go to Matthew 4.4 4 because I want you to see it with your eyes. You're, there's something about seeing the word if you're able. Man, if you don't have your Bibles, or you can go home and look at it. And, amen. Matthew 4.4. 4. So he's being tempted. He's weak. He's probably super hungry. Would anybody agree with me? And this is what he says in verse 4. He answered and he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. And he's talking about the natural bread, church. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that word, when you study it, means rhema word. It means not just reading the word, but when the word gets illuminated like a scripture and you grab a hold of it and it's meaning something to you. There's life in it. And, it, and as you meditate on it, it drops down. Amen. It's talking about that word. That, and, and so I believe that Jesus, as he was 40 days in the wilderness, he was most likely meditating on the word. This is a scripture that he quoted from the Old Testament. Amen. And even though he was weak, he was weak here physically. I believe he was strong. He was able to rise up and be strong in the spirit from speaking and meditating the word of God. Amen. Amen. And when he took that rhema word, that he, he knew it was in him, he knew that he knew, and he took it and used it against Satan, just that word, just that short word, got rid of him. You know what I mean? Quieted him. Defeated him in that yeah. battle. Amen? It defeated the adversary. The word of God that becomes alive in you will defeat the enemy and stop his purposes in your life. Amen. So he, he, he spoke those words and he says, but by every word that per proceeds from the mouth of God. This is word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Even prophetic word that God has given me that I know that I know is from him. You understand what I mean by that? Something he's spoken to my spirit that lines up with the word. Or somebody has spoke that lines up with the word. It's like a promise, something he's telling me that is going to happen. Amen. Do you understand what I mean? It's like it doesn't say anywhere in here, Deborah, you are called to the nations. And your first nation you're going to go to is Jamaica. It doesn't say that in there, okay? Yeah. But God spoke that to me. And when the enemy came against me, that was something that I would think on and speak out of my mouth and say, uh-uh, yeah. you're not stopping me. Even though it looks like there is no way, no way, totally impossible for many reasons why I would not be able to do that. My children were young at the time. People said I was crazy at the time. There was no finances at the time. Come on. And plus, I didn't want to get on an airplane. But God had spoke. I said, never, never. I, I've been 131 times into the nations. And that doesn't count all these other trips. Hallelujah. But as, as that's what I'm talking about, that word. I used it as a weapon. It's like God said. Because he said it to me personally. Amen. You can use your word, your prophetic word, as warfare against the enemy if it's truly from God. Amen. Because it will line up Amen. with the word of God. So Jesus said, man shall live by every word of God. 
So how do we do this? We know. Number one, meditation, prayer, fasting, study. Amen? Glory to God. I like to compare this in the natural because I think that some, there's something I will say today that will, you will really grab a hold of and will really minister to you. Just as you eat food, don't tell me you don't, unless you're on a fast. Every one of you are going to hightail out of here, amen, when I say amen, and you're going to find McDonald's or you're going to go somewhere, amen, and you're going to eat or you're going to go to your homes, whatever, come on, amen. So we need food. We need natural food, right? Why do we need to eat, church? Well, if you're not going to eat, you're eventually going to die, and you're not going to be any good, right? We need to eat, and it's good to eat good food, but I won't go into that. But we eat to nourish our bodies, right? A child eats, they grow. They change. They're not even the same. You look at even Allie, she's almost, she's five months old. She doesn't even look the same as when she was born. That's only five months. And she eats. And when you don't feed her, she lets you know. <laughs> Amen. Well, a lot of you do the same thing because you get crabby. I'm telling on somebody here. You know, when you don't eat and you start getting weak, you go a day or two without food. Are you with me? Your body starts feeling weak. Amen. You, you uh, need that. You need that nourishment for your body in the same way. That's why you need this food. This is food. Someone say, this is food for me spiritually. And I need to eat it. Because that is how I'm going to grow in the spirit. This is my vitamins. This is my carbohydrates. Amen. My minerals. Everything I need. This is the balance of what I need to be strong and to be healthy. Isn't that good? I bet you won't forget that. Amen? And without it, you're going to be malnourished. You're going to end up weak in the spirit. And, and you're going to go, to, you're going to be, you're going to waver to the right, to the left. You're going to give up. The winds blow, you're just going to quit. Because you've not been eating the word of God. You'll become sickly. Amen. In the spirit realm. And you won't be able to fulfill your destiny. You won't be able to glorify God. And that's our purpose. Amen. To lift him up wherever I go. I want him glorified and lifted up before anything. One attack. If I was not eating the word one attack, let me tell you. Where we go, there are witch doctors. Their purpose, their assignment is to take me out. Their assignment, amen, is to get rid of me. But when you have been eating on the word of God, I'm telling you, they're not able to budge you. And they're the ones that have to back up or come to the altar and get saved. And they did. Amen. And I can give you many, many, many testimonies. Hallelujah. I'm just thinking of one. You know the word of God. I'm going to try to wrap this up. But it's coming to me. And there's some new people that have heard me preach a lot. Those that have been in Bible school, you've heard it and heard it. But I was in Haiti. And it was our first time, and it was very, they had my, my pictures on the trees, and they were like, we're taking her out. Because nobody had ever come there before and preached the message, the gospel message. And so there were nowhere to put anything but on the trees. And the witch doctor seen it, and it's like, okay, we're gathering together. And I remember going up for that first meeting, and there was a witch doctor not far from where I was walking up to get on the platform. And as I began to, they, he, was, he was probably as close as my husband is to me. That's how close he was. But I didn't know who he was. And I started to go up the platform and somebody grabbed my hand to help me, but I fell. I fell and 
really hurt myself really bad in terrible pain. But I want you to know that no weapon formed against you can prosper when you know the word of God. I went up there and the speaker was kept looking back. It's like, Deborah, you have to preach. And like I and my whole team is praying around me and I'm in this horrible pain because I had twisted my ankle and fell on it. And so here I am, okay, okay, Lord, just just get me through this pain. He, no mercy, he turns around and he says, and our speaker is Reverend Deborah Zimmer. And, he, and it's like I had not, I had to get up there because I think before I was fighting with it. I got up there and something happened. I got up there, I was so angry because I knew it was the witch doctors. And I got up there and I started jumping up. My team was like, because they knew, I started jumping up and down. And I said, the blood of Jesus is more powerful than all of you lined up. And any attack that you throw at us, I started jumping up and down. The whole place went crazy, started praising God, and I was healed. Wow. God is powerful. God is good. And tell me, how did I get on that with what I'm preaching? I have no idea. The word. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So we need to eat it. We need to eat the word of God. We need to know what eating the word of God. Not just read a scripture, forget about it, and go about our day. Come on. Not just reading a short little devotion and going about our day. Let's take a little bit more time in that word. One scripture. Amen? Let's take a little more time. And I am getting ready to close. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is what I believe, church, as I close. I believe that the word of God is coming alive in such a powerful way in this new season. And that's why God said it's a new season of, of fruitfulness. Amen? Amen? Then I believe that once we begin to practice this, as we begin to read the word, it's going to go down deeper then it's ever gone. Amen. It's going to go down deeper and the riches, the riches of that living word is going to be revealed to us and become a part of us. I believe that's the season we're in. I believe it's so vital because of what God is getting ready to do. Amen. Hallelujah. So we know as I close that there is food inside the word, but you've got to crack it open to get the nutrients, to get what's in it, to get the riches of what's in it. Hallelujah. You've got to open it. That's through meditation. Y'all all following me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. When you take, if I give you a pear or an apple, you're going to chew it to get the nutrients out of it. She's not just going to take it and swallow it. She's not going to be able to. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe this is extreme example, but uh, I'm trying to paint a picture how we need to chew our food. And they say the more you chew it, the better off it is. The more nutrients you receive, amen, and the better it is for your body. So there is food inside the word of God. And God says, I want you to partake of it because it will strengthen you. And as I commanded Joshua, be strong. Be courageous. He said, I gave him a key, and that was meditation. Chew on the food, because you will be bold. You will be strong. You will be courageous. So I believe as we partake of it, it strengthens us. It empowers us. It anoints us. It takes us higher and deeper in God. Yeah. Amen. Like I said earlier, there are layers inside the word. Amen. Inside the word is your inheritance. Your blessings, your richness. Amen. Amen. And when we meditate, we find those hidden treasures. Amen. Amen. We find that hidden wealth. All right. We are closing, but let me read a scripture. You don't have to turn there. But I found this last night. It's Deuteronomy 29. I want to just read it to you one scripture. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Isn't that awesome? First, you can memorize that. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed 
belong to us. That's what happens in revelation. That's what happens in meditation. Of course, some of this, I realize there's that revelation that comes in being in his presence. But we need that word broken inside of us if we're going to go higher in revelation. Right, church? It says the secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us. And that's what he's doing. And to our children forever. That we may do all the words of this law. This hidden wealth becomes our treasure. That's what God is saying. It be, these riches become your riches. And it impacts us and impacts generations to come. Amen. Not only are we to find them, but we're to lay hold of them. We're to grab a hold of them. Amen. So it becomes a part of us, and that's part of that, that medicate, meditation. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to have you stand to your feet as I close. Have we been blessed? Yes. I just want to ask this question as a summary. So what happens when we take time to meditate on the word church? Many of you would shout out something, something you grabbed a hold of. But one thing I know, it will come alive in you. And it will reveal and release in your life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And we will be imparted with richness. That that's inside of the word, not just skimming over it. We've got to have what's inside. We've got to go deeper, church. That those powerful things, the truth. Amen. And you know what it'll do? It's going to bring shift in your life. It's going to bring change in your life. It's going to bring transformation in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for each one that is here. And I believe even if they did grab it all, but as they opened up their heart. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that this truth has been deposited in them. And they'll never forget these words about meditation and how if they really want to see some growth and some change, they're going to have to eat your word. I ask God that this would be ingrained within them. I ask Holy Spirit that you would seal these words. I thank you for each one. And I declare over them, not only... Are they going to learn to meditate? But this will be their new season of fruitfulness. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, yeah. Amen.